Finish well. Greetings and blessings, everybody. Welcome to Good Gas Mondays live on Instagram. If it's your first, if it's your first time here, um, we do this every Monday. Last week, Monday was the only Monday for 2021 that I missed Good Gas Mondays. And if you know what happened last week, Monday, you can understand why I would not have been in a position to come on and share because I was processing a lot last week, Monday. So, I just took one week off. Um, and you know, sometimes you have to make the dust settle so that the good sense can come back, even inside the audience here. Because um, as I celebrate today, 250,000 in my online community, guys, thank you so much. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. And I'm so grateful to have you as part of this online community, just to be able to share in my journey and then in any way possible that I can serve you and impact positively your own life and your own experience. I really consider it such an honor. You know, thank you for, for stopping to hear me. I know I write some very long captions. So for those who actually stop and read the captions, thank you guys. Um, I use this as a space to share my perspective. So it's not going to be like a two word caption. Whenever I do that, I think I've done that twice. And when I do it, like people comment and go, is something wrong? What happened? You all right? <laughs> because they're just not used to the short captions. So if you're new to the community and by new, I mean only a couple of weeks or, or a month, I'm known for long captions, but just trust me. Right, read it to the end. And I try to make my hashtags nice. So when you get to the end, I have some nice, quirky, funny hashtags. Um, but welcome to my online community right here on Instagram. It is a pleasure to be able to reach such a large audience. And I take that with a sense of responsibility because it's a mixed group from teenagers, young boys, young girls, um, adults, <clears throat> young adults, middle-aged, those over middle-aged. <laughs> Um, from all kinds of uh, professions, countries, different walks of life. Uh, so I, I know that this, my page is not for everybody, right? I can't be for everybody. You, you probably know a cup of tea video. I'm not everybody's cup of tea and that's okay. If you like Cersei, I am coffee, right? Or I am mint bush. If, if, if you don't like mint bush, I encourage you to drink me, right? Because, yes, he's a Cersei person. You're a Milo person. You know, you're an Olix person. So, I'm, no, I'm not going to be everybody's cup of tea. And I'm perfectly okay with that. But I'm very strident about the things I believe in. Um, the values and the principles that I hold there. They are mine. I'm not foisting them on anybody. But if you come in my space, be prepared to deal with me. And so no negative energy is welcome. So I am actually not going to tell anybody to come off the live. What I'm going to do is just look for those people who make the wacky comments and block you from no. And let me tell you why. I don't believe in emotionally abusing anybody. You see, if you don't like me, you really shouldn't be over here. If I grind your gears, if there's something about me that is off-putting to you, you should not punish yourself and suffer by sitting on this live and having to look into my face, into my eyes and hear my voice penetrating deeply through your brain, into your soul. Forgot I have nightmare tonight. That's not fair to you. So I will block you. I believe in good emotional hygiene. So I'm going to allow you all, if you're here, just kind of watching to say something um, out of pocket. Say it. I'm not going to tell you not to say it. But show your hand so I can block you. Deal? Don't feel no way. If you realize it can't come back on any of my lives or on my page. So that's the deal. I'm not going to tell you what not to say. But the minute you say it, you're out of here. It's, yeah. You can't be punishing yourself like that. I will free you from that prison. 
okay <laughs> Um, and sometimes I don't see the comments and so my my um my community will see it and just start to hit back at you and tell you what you doing over here because sit down come off of the girl live come off of the lady live so they will also draw my attention to you when I don't see it but you've been warned if you want to continue to enjoy the content on my page you gotta be nice like say what you say in your room in your bathroom with your friend in your whatsapp group but you're not gonna come on my platform in the middle of my community and be disrespectful gonna block you so just know what you're doing okay just look in here to see if anybody jump out of them pocket right oh no oh no jump out on the pocket all right good <laughs> um right so today i'm actually sharing from i guess you can call it a place of vulnerability because Almost everybody that's online now would be aware of the fact that I've just gone through a breakup. Or I can't say going through because severing ties is really like a process. Emotional ties is a process. But that hasn't been the difficulty for me or even the difficulty for my online audience. My community is really baffled by just the negativity and the aggression and the vitriol and the dishonesty don't write lies as people try to frame my own life in a way that makes them comfortable so whatever it is that people want to think i am or whoever they want to think i am they frame every single circumstance to match their perception of me and this situation is really no different so you'll see all over the place people making some very strange allegations and assertions and you know, and I'll, I'll walk you through how I'm dealing with that on this live because it's a question I see come up in the comment threads under my posts quite a lot. You know, how do you do that? Because that is hard, Crystal. How are you showing up? How are you, you know, still confident and happy and just look well with all of what is going on? And to be fair, I have to tell you, I don't see all of what is going on. So a lot of the pages where the mischief is happening and the disrespect and the lies and the bring down, I don't follow those pages so I really can't see. And I brag about my friends all the time. I have such a good circle of people around me. Them now go take up my phone and go, Girl, my sex, my sex child. Mm -mm, they're not going to do that. And they're not going to just forward wacky messages into our WhatsApp chats, personal chats or group chats. That's not who they are. And I'm so grateful to have people like that to call friends, you know, sisters, brothers. So a lot of what you may be seeing online, believe when I tell you, I don't see not even 1% of it. Not even 1% of it because I've curated my circle so meticulously that a good energy alone surround me and people who want to empower me and lift up my spirits and encourage me. And I don't have anybody close to me who secretly wants to see me suffer and will just take time, poison the well and just share some stuff where I got chew you off. Mm -mm. Even if they're going to show me something that they think it's important for me to know, they actually ask permission first. Like, is it okay to share this, this screenshot? It's about so and so. And I think you might want to frame, you know, to know what, what's happening. Even to share a screenshot. Like my friends ask me, is it okay to share that with you? So, I mean, I say that to say, guys, don't. I can't tell you not to be upset about what you're seeing. Because I don't know, like, half of what you're seeing. But rest assured that my well has not been polluted or poisoned and i'm able to keep a smile and you know keep my energy high and be optimistic and loving and supportive in a time when i also need support because i don't have anybody in my, my space that are just like ah, bring down now uh -uh. don't have anybody like that and i'm grateful so i want to say thank you publicly again for my friends and I know 
some people are trying to come at my friends and my friendships with the slander, with the sus, with the bangarang, but it's not going to work. You know, you can't, you can't make something up and expect that that's going to destroy real friendships. That's not how real friendships work. So because I exist in a space of honesty with my friends, them not have to think twice when me say something. I mean, I have to think twice when them say something. And I really value that. Like, that has been a major tool. Yeah? In the toolkit, going through this valley. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. How we deal with difficult situations. And I feel so privileged. Because for me, it's a privilege to be able to stand in my valley now and see all the things that are going on, feel all the things that are to be felt, hear what is to be heard, and still feel anchored and safe and sure and certain of me and my worthiness. Sometimes when we're going through difficult situations, the first thing we question is who we are. We begin to doubt who we are. And I want to say to anybody who is going through something painful, difficult, hard, you can't, you probably can't share it with anybody in your circle. You probably don't have a trusted confidant, an ear that is really just willing to listen to you compassionately and serve your emotional interest and not their like a sinister interest. Maybe you don't have anybody who you can share with and you feel like you're standing in your valley by yourself two things i want to say to you if you're going through that process and i'm speaking from experience right I'm not reading this out of no book i'm not pulling something out of thin air i'm telling you from my experience what has worked for me and i want to share it with you i've come to accept that failing is a part of living you're gonna take risks you're gonna make an attempt you're going to try something new you're going to invest time money energy whatever and it's not every time it's going to work but failing is a part of living if you make no attempt and you take no risk you're not fully living because that means you're in your comfort zone where everything's sure and everything's certain and you know how everything work already. So there's nothing new. You can't learn nothing new. You can't develop no new skill. You can't move in on a new zone on a higher level because you're in that comfort zone where you're sure about everything. You know how everything work. Those of us living outside of our comfort zone, challenging ourselves, taking risks, pushing the boundaries, trying to stretch ourselves beyond who we know now and get ourselves into the who we would like to become, we know this already as a fact that failure is a part of this thing called living. I have gotten comfortable with that. It is the fear of failure that keep people from trying new things and ever experiencing anything new and different in life because they're afraid that they're going to fail at it and they're so afraid to fail that they don't even make the attempt. The success that you enjoy in life is not because you set the goal and achieve the goal. That's not the only way to measure success. For some of us, success is going the journey, right? You may not end up precisely where you thought you would end up. But you see the act of moving from point A to point B, trusting yourself to work out a plan, training yourself so your legs then are failure upon the journey, dropping a two pat will get up and keep walking, Miss the right, miss the left turn ready for make and you have to make an extra one and come back around for catch back the left turn. You see, who you become on that journey to the goal is far superior to whatever that goal is. Because they have taken that journey to tell yourself that this is where I am. And I feel like I could go 10 miles. And everybody around you say, What do you mean you can go 10 miles? You don't know, say two mile shoes you get, eh? You got 10 miles, 10 miles where? Nobody else gonna know how far 10 miles down, what it over, mile six, much less mile 10. Where you go? 
We don't know. Nobody never gonna send back a picture yet. Me not have no WhatsApp message for say yet. Yeah, Melton, nice. Where you going? Stay here so I could do two two miles at a time. Right? After five attempts, eventually we get to ten. I said, no, mama feel like my can just make one shot and go ten. Not enough people in your circle will be clear on why you know you're gonna do that. Not enough people to support you and say, yeah man, go on, go on, go on. What, whatever it turn out to be, however it decide for go, just know something in your corner, I have your back. Can I trust you? You trust yourself? All right, can I trust you? You believe in yourself? Okay, can I believe in you? I'm a day for you. So if, you, if your energy, I tell you, say, I 10 years ago for going for 10. I can only manage two, you know. But I now make the fact that me can only manage two stop you from going for your 10. And that's why I talk so much about having good friends. The people you surround yourself with, Two things can happen. Because you and all your friends are not going to on the same level at all times. Because when rain and fall for you, sometimes a sun shine for them. When sun shine for you, sometimes rain and fall for them. So everybody not going to on the same footing at the same time all the time. Sometimes you are enjoying like a success. Sometimes you are enjoying like a failure. Sometimes you are enjoying like a movement and progress. Sometimes no movement, no progress. And vice versa. But you see, if you have people around you who don't believe that you should move at a pace faster than they are moving, you will never get the encouragement to take on your 10 mile. Because them have two mile shoes. And as much as you tell them, say, no man, I feel so that period, I can't do the 10 mile. You see, if them believe, say, you know, if you move faster than them or go further than them, them are going to keep encouraging you to take on two miles, the two two miles. They want you to take on with them can manage. If them can manage it, them never tell you to do it. And so you have to get yourself situated in an environment where you can be surrounded by people who are okay if you are going a little faster and they don't begin to feel inadequate. You have to situate yourself in a space where you're surrounded by people who, if you are going slower than they are, they not feel like they have nothing over you now for turn back and say, they look at me for help him. They look at me for help she. Remember say I needed help you. Remember say I needed help them. So you have to find good friends. And good friends are not just a friend who show up when you call and say, Jesus, I'm stressed out, come. Or lend your money when you need money. Or drive you go A to B when you need a drive. It's those moments when you are about to go further than them. And they might push you and I say, go on, me catch you up, man. Go on, tell me how to ride. Call me and tell me if, if you find a shortcut. Me I come up, me just can't make it now, but you go on. Or when they are experiencing the surge and the growth and the expansion, they don't see it as a burden to turn back and say, come friend, come friend, here's what I've learned. Here is how I do this. Here is how I think you can learn from my experience. Here's a little bit of the brata from where, you know, me, me, me get out of it. It's something here for you. They don't see it as anything burdensome. And they certainly don't see it as something to rub back in your face. When you are in your valley, you're going to find out what type of friendships you really have. And I'll talk in a future live about friendships and what you should look for um, in good friendships. Not the science mega talk, no. Not the personal experience. Because there are scientists who research friendships. Strange, right? But there are people who research friendships and what makes for good relationships. I'm going to share that with you in another live. But I go back to the, to the points I wanted to share with you. You have to accept failure as a consequence of choosing to live. The minute you accept that failing is a part of the choice to live your life, you will lose that sense of fear that what if you fail? And so you're not about to try. And two, when you are deciding on this journey that you're going to take, be careful of the voices that you have around you. Now, I'm not telling you to surround yourself with yes man and yes woman. But know when people are giving you advice because of what they want versus what they know you want. So you'll have a friend who knows, say, Boy, you know, say Stacy ambition is really to become a doctor. And my sister Stacy won't apply for this law degree. Yeah. But all along me I talk to Stacy. Stacy said to me, say, I'm medicine she like. 
So now Stacey asked me what I think about the law program. Yeah. I forgot to tell Stacey, say, listen, remember say, all this time I'm medicine where I talk about, you know, what change? I'm not discourage you from the law program, you know, but you sure say this you really want? Because from me know you, you just dip on this stethoscope, stethoscope something. So a friend who understands what your real desires are will see you doing something and say, but babes, remember saying this you did want, you know? Fam, bro, sis, remember saying this you say you want, you know? Versus saying, no, Sam, I think if I try that, mm -mm, I wouldn't try it if I did me. Yes? So be careful of the people who you have around you. Because the type of advice they give you could be to help them feel more comfortable with your life. Versus reminding you, being a sort of vanguard for your vision. Reminding you what you say you really want, what you value, what you're working towards. So there's an accountability side to friendship that will require them to tell you, say, uh-uh, no, not do it. But the no and the discouragement comes from a place of love for you and them wanting to honor what they know you want because you've said that this is what you want and you're taking a path now that is in contradiction to the thing that you say you want. So accept that failure is part of life and bring people along on the journey who can give you advice that you trust. Because we can't do this thing alone. If we expect life to be easy, anytime something hard come, it's going to knock us down for longer than it needs to knock us down. And when you reach in a valley, you will think that that is where you belong and where you must stay. And I said earlier that one of the first things that happens when you hit a, 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 a rock bottom place, when you hit a, a, a failure, when you hit a disappointment, when you hit a loss, is for you to start questioning yourself like, yo, what wrong with me? Like, oh me, bad luck, so. Oh, nothing can work for me, so. And you start to make it a me issue. Like, something wrong with me if I am failing. No, it's, it's a natural part of the process. And the same thing that we admire in these stories that you hear about Oprah and Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg and all of the big names, them. We read about them in a book and we say, wow, so inspiring. Notice that none of those stories talk about a smooth pathway and journey from um, where, they, where they started in life to where they are now as millionaires and billionaires. What inspires us is the struggle and the strain and the stress and the problem and the hardship and how they dealt with the hardships. And that inspire we. The person was born with a gold spoon in their mouth and never have to work hard for nothing yet and then win something or get some big prize. That not really inspiring. It's a nice story, we're glad for them, yeah. Good things for them for people. Big up yourself, more good things, yeah. But that not say, wow, yo, that just give me a Pause and make me just feel like, yo, me need to step up the thing and me just have a vibe there now because it's a struggle and how people deal with their struggle. So the same thing that you are admiring in their stories, admire it in yourself too. Admire it in yourself too. When you see that you're experiencing moments of failure, struggle, strain, pain, hardship, you're in the valley, just take a deep breath. Boy, see the story I come here now. Mm-hmm. See the turn around here. Okay. And this I got inspire my grandpa them when me tell them how me to deal with this. Alright, I'm get my head in the game and buckle down myself and focus on how I'm gonna get out of this. Because this here so is going to be something that serves a generation after me. One more person. It's a testimony where when me give it, somebody got irritated and say, Wow, I feel like say yeah, I could do this too. So embrace the struggle. Good things happen to good people. Good things happen to bad people. Bad things happen to bad people, but bad things also happen to good people. So when you realize that you have experienced disappointment, it's not because something wrong with you. Because remember, bad things happen to good people and bad things happen to bad people. Disappointment is for everybody. So when it, it is your turn to experience it, don't personalize it. Don't tell yourself, say, Lord, what is me? I eat this now. My daddy I know. It, I can't come back. What is the point? That kind of perspective don't get the energy for move through your valley. And Psalm 23, 4 says, Yea, though I walk through 
the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. A lot of us hear that psalm and we say, yeah, because nothing will frighten me. I'm not afraid of no, nothing. Nothing will scare me. That's an important part of the scripture. But another important part of opening the first part, it says, yeah, though I walk through, I don't come here to stay. I not take up residence. I am a visitor to the valley. The valley and my yard. Yea, though I walk through it. So when you reach your valley, them know your first your first response can be Jesus no me give up. Mm -mm. Can't take no more. Father God, I eat this. Me don't know. Drop the bag them. Yea, do I walk through? And you tell this. And if I hear say come, this is not stop. This is a destination, but this is not the destiny. So where where do I drop the bag them? Boy, I give up. Yea, though I walk through. So if you decide, say, now walk through. Where's the help going to come from to bring you through? If you decide, say, this say, yeah, stay. How are you going to get out? So the first tool, first tool that I would recommend to anybody who might be in their valley right now is to be still and welcome the alone time in the struggle, whatever that struggle is. Whatever the valley is that you're in right now, before you drop it back, the man say, you know what? Kick out the shoe. Don't know. Don't want. Not, not take another step. Before you do that, just take some time in that moment to be alone and still and hear how you are to walk through or work through or heal through this valley. Because sometimes the valley requires different things of us. I know valley I go come in a life, you know. And every valley you treat the same way. Some valley, you have to go aggressive and work through them. Some of the valleys, you have to go take a softer, more delicate approach. Some of the valleys is internal work. You have some healing and some restoration and reparation to do. So the first thing you have to do now is quiet your mind. Zone in. Listen in. Settle in. Get silent in. And allow the universe to talk to you. Allow your creator to talk to you. That inner voice and that inner wisdom that we talk about. The source of life. The wisdom. The life wisdom and divine direction. All of us have it in us. All of us have it in us. But sometimes life too noisy. So we're not here. We can't hear. And the valley is sometimes the moment where we get to slow down. Slow down and get still. Everything we did urgent. Everything we did have to do. Everything we did must do. Oh, I found somebody. Whoop. Hey. Hey. Because I was wondering who this person is. I saw people replying and I couldn't see who it was. Right. So sometimes the valley, sometimes the valley is the opportunity to slow down. And I know some people will hear what I'm saying and just automatically locate it like it have to always do with relationship. Life is more complicated than who you're there with and who you don't there with. Life is so much more complicated than that. There are so many other valleys to go through except that. So I don't want you guys to keep like restrict the message and make it about only relationships. It can be about anything. You know what you're dealing with. But sometimes you get into the valley now and at the only moment you get in such a long time for just stop. Just take a breath. For just cree. In a Jamaica when you play one game and you're tired and you want pause, you say cree. Like the valley of the cree. You get for go so. No man. I so much things did I go on. Just cree now. The valley make you can say cree. And stop. And listen. Look at your life. What has your life been telling you all along? Play back some conversation. What were those conversations telling you? Just, just going back over the data, the life data. My friend Rasheen Robinson calls it life data. You just look, just look back and say, what? Then what? What was I missing? What was life asking of me and I wasn't answering with? What was life telling me and I was not taking note of? You know, just, just looking back at life. 
the valley allows you to pause and just hear the right voice, the divine voice and the direction that you may have missed. So appreciate the time in the valley and make use of the stillness. <laughs>